You're watching ABC 7 News at 7. The policy is basically if they have made a legitimate threat, they have a weapon or they have access to weapons or they have a legal right to go purchase a weapon, then they would fall under this RPO. Police now have the authority to take away someone's weapons if they're shown to be a danger to themselves or others, but how exactly will that work? Good evening, everyone. I'm Alan Cohn, and welcome to ABC 7 at 7. We'll have more on the new red flag law in a moment, but first, our top seven stories at 7. And we begin tonight with how not to ask a girl to the prom. A student from Riverview High School posted this picture on social media, and it is going viral for being racist. The sign reading, if I was black, I'd be picking cotton, but I'm white, so I'm picking you for the prom. A Riverview student posted the picture on Facebook. She says this is not the first time racial incidents have occurred on Riverview's campus. I've just been complaining about someone been calling me the N-word. I have, we've had our problems. We dealt with it or they tried to deal with it. I don't know why it took them this long or it took administration this long to figure out how big of a problem this is, but I'm glad it's something's being done about it now. The district says it is still an ongoing investigation and any di di uh, disciplinary action will be made accordingly. A Sarasota man is being charged with stealing more than 300 tools from dozens of homes and businesses. Throughout the last two months, police received reports Sarasota businesses had been burglarized, all of them missing tools. Detectives set up surveillance cameras and caught 57-year-old Lazaro Rodriguez allegedly stealing tools and taking them to a storage facility on North Washington Boulevard. Inside, police found more than $100,000 worth of stolen equipment linked to at least a dozen burglaries. Tonight, they are still searching for Rodriguez's alleged accomplice, 32-year-old Ricardo Ruiz. This was a, an enterprise. This was an operation that they were working. And when our detectives were able to, to open up the storage locker, it was filled from top to bottom. And it took our um, investigators a long time to be able to categorize these items and then try to identify who it belongs to. If you live in the city of Sarasota and have had any tools recently stolen, contact the Sarasota Police Department. Venice police raided a home today suspected of being a hub of drug activity. Four people were detained, three of them arrested for possession of marijuana, meth and cocaine. Police also finding needles inside and outside the home. The house is within a thousand feet of an elementary school. Venice is paradise. If you're going to be doing drugs and creating problems like this in our city, you can, we're going to know about it and we're going to come and put you in jail. Police say they have been running surveillance on the home for several months. Sarasota police have arrested a man in connection with the shooting on Lido Beach last night. 27-year-old Rancel Pages Cajasso is being charged with two counts of aggravated assault and possession of a firearm by a convicted felon. Police say Pages Cajasso pointed his handgun at two people and fired several times. No one was injured. Pages Cajuso is being held on $7,500. Dollars bond. The Longbow Key Police need your help identifying the man on your screen. He is wanted in connection to an armed robbery on April 10th. If you have any information, you are asked to call the Longbow Police Department. New details tonight on a deadly wrong way crash on I-75 in Sarasota over the weekend. The Florida Highway Patrol says 38-year-old Jermaine Ginyard caused the crash that killed another driver and shut down the interstate for several hours early Saturday. Troopers say Ginyard got onto the interstate at University Parkway, but he was heading south in the northbound lanes. Both Ginyard and the other driver, Joseph Wolamine of Ohio, were killed. If you have filled your gas tank the past couple of weeks, you have noticed it is costing more. Florida's gas prices hit a three year high over the weekend as oil prices were up about 25% from a year ago. According to AAA, the auto group put the state average at $2.74 a gallon for regular gas on Sunday, up 11 cents from a week ago and 28 cents from a year ago. While we might see some uh, some additional increases uh, this spring, but we we don't you know forecast dramatic price increases at this point. It could be worse. We still have a long way to go to hit our all-time high of four dollars and eight cents a gallon from back in July 2008. I remember those days. Now let's head over to ABC7's chief meteorologist Bob Harrigan with the first alert forecast. Bob. 
Well, we are looking at a low pressure area that is moving away from us. It's moving toward the northeast. Now you can see it's spinning quite clearly with a counterclockwise swirl moving through Tennessee and Kentucky. This low pressure will again track off to the northeast, pulling a lot of the moisture with it. Uh, we still have a weak frontal system that we have to work on through tomorrow and it won't bring a lot of rainfall. But you can see some pretty big storms today and they're still firing up in the Highlands County. They've had a lot of rainfall there. That's where the main focus has been for us anyway into the central portion of our viewing area in the Highlands County pushing off to the east. Not much rain at all for the west coast of Florida. It's been rather quiet here today. We had a few brief, <coughs> excuse me, brief showers earlier, uh, but that's been about it. Some showers starting to pop up again near Sebring, also uh, to the south and southeast of Sebring, pushing into the Atlantic Ocean and moving to the east. And boy, some big storms earlier today near Jacksonville and Daytona Beach. Those are now out there in the Atlantic. Now, currently we have 78 degrees and the dew point is at 74. That's way up there. High humidity. Making it feel a little bit warmer out there, but still not too bad with a nice breeze coming in from the Gulf. The pressure actually starting to rise a little bit. We'll take you through the future cast and you can see those storms in the East Coast kind of moving on through and then a few showers possible overnight and tomorrow morning as the week cold front moves through. This is at two o'clock uh, showing that line for the most part through us and then uh, we're looking at pretty nice weather tomorrow night and on into Wednesday. Good for the lawns. Right. A few showers, especially the inland showers are helping out. I didn't get much of my house. I could use a little bit more. I got a little bit. All right. All right. Thanks. Inland a little bit. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Bob. And still to come, with the new red flag law, police can take your guns if they believe you are a danger, but how long can they hold on to them? And how is this going to work? We'll tell you after the break. The skills you develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment that will give you a leg up in the civilian world. Learn critical leadership skills and to be part of a team. Serve your community and your country part-time while earning money for an education. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. Did you know you could get life insurance for less than 32 cents a day? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through True Stage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with a single phone call. And you cannot be turned down for any reason. Even if you have health problems or are living on a fixed income, guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance policies could work for you with prices starting at less than 32 cents a day. That's as low as $9.40 a month. True Stage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. My mom didn't have life insurance and the cost all fell on me. And that's expensive. Mm -hmm. we're, we're still paying for yeah, that. Yeah, we're still paying for that. Call 1-800-218-4991. Now, in one phone call, you can help prepare your family with protection amounts up to $25,000. There are no medical tests or health questions. And remember, you cannot be turned down for any reason. In fact, True Stage policies are already protecting over 18 million Americans. And rates are designed to be affordable, starting at less than 32 cents a day. That's as low as $9.40 a month. Plus, your price will never increase and your benefit will never decrease. When I leave, everything will be taken care of for them. Call 1-800-218-4991. Now, for a free, no obligation quote, True Stage offers plans to fit your budget with prices starting at less than 32 cents a day. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through True Stage. Call 1-800-218-4991 now. Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now. Florida legislators implemented several new gun laws as part of the Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School Public Safety Act. Part of that bill allows law enforcement to confiscate guns from people deemed a risk to themselves or others. ABC 7's Jess Dowdrick joins us now with the story, Jess. Alan, it's called the red flag law. If law enforcement thinks that someone is a danger to themselves or others, officers can get a judge order to take that gun away. The goal being to save lives, but some feel this is taking away Americans' constitutional rights. 
The Manatee County Sheriff's Office has hit the ground running. Since the uh, bill was signed, we've done two already. Two firearms from two Manatee County residents that they see as mentally unfit to have a firearm. This red flag procedure is a whole new ball game for them. Before the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Public Safety Act was signed into law, deputies could only take firearms from those who were Baker Acted. We could only hold that firearm in our evidence for 72 hours. Now deputies can take it one step further and take firearms from any community members who they see as mentally ill, not just those who are Baker Acted. So we have a person that has made a legitimate threat uh, to uh, school, uh, a third party, uh, it's a Baker Act situation. We have our detectives figure out while they're on scene, do they have weapons? Was a weapon involved uh, during the threat? Do they have additional? When deputies decide someone should have their firearms taken away, they have to ask the judge for an RPO or a risk protection order. So if the judge signs off on it, so usually the, the plan is for them to review it that day. Uh, and if it's late, then by the next business day. Uh, then if they approve that, it's, you know, it's probable cause, we will retrieve the weapons. While the Manatee County Sheriff's Office already has its policy in place, other local departments like Sarasota Police Department are still working on theirs. We're in the process of developing a procedure and um, even looking at if it's the responsibility of local law enforcement or is it a Sheriff's Department uh, responsibility because they usually handle uh, civil uh, proceedings. For Chief Bernadette DePino, she feels that this new red flag law doesn't give the department enough parameters. It really is up to us to make determinations as to what the criteria is to determine whether it's appropriate to take the firearms from the individuals. That's an issue for gun attorney Jeff Young. Obviously the concept is, is really good when you think about it in general and on paper it may look good but with anything else the issue comes into enforcement. You could have officers that misinterpret it or, or are overzealous in using it or judges that don't necessarily understand what the language in the law is meant to be. This law could mean people losing their firearms and right to own a firearm for up to a year at a time. Once you're served with a temporary petition to remove your firearms, within two weeks you have to have an actual formal hearing in the courtroom in front of a judge, and at that hearing you're allowed to come in and present um, your evidence as to why you shouldn't have them taken away. If the judge rules in favor of the gun owner, they'll get that weapon back. If not, it's in police custody for a year. I, I understand and wholeheartedly support getting weapons and ammunition out of the hands of the people that are truly mentally ill. I just have concerns that we're not going through our constitutional procedures that we need to follow. This red flag law was part of the reason why State Senator Greg Stubbe voted against the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas Public Safety Act. I wholeheartedly believe at some point somebody's going to go through this and have their firearms and their ammunition taken away and they're going to sue on Fourth Amendment grounds because they have to petition the court to get their property back. But law enforcement is confident this bill will keep their communities safer. And I think that it does uh, a lot of good for our community. It does a lot of good for just the safety of everyone involved, including uh, the person. The sheriff's office is going through training with their deputies right now to make sure that they know and understand the new law. Sheriff Wells says it's complicated and puts a lot of burden on law enforcement. Jess, thank you. And coming up in the moment, reaction from a former high-ranking official from the NYPD, one of the area's most respected psychologists, and the gun lawyer himself at the trapezoid. You won't want to miss it. I work hard all day, and this is why. But taking care of my money has never been easy. Brinks knows what's valuable to me, making it easy to keep track of my money and pay my bills on time. Here's to the strong, to the dependable, to the trusted. Your family counts on you. Who can you count on? The Brinks prepaid MasterCard. With direct deposit, you can get your paycheck or government payments up to two days faster. I don't have time to wait for a paycheck, cash it, and then run around and pay bills. Brinks knows what's valuable to me, time. Call now or go online to get your Brinks prepaid MasterCard. There's no cost to order and no credit check. Load money onto your card and then shop online, pay bills, buy groceries. I get a text alert every time our card is used, so we always know our balance. And we're protected from unauthorized transactions. Brinks gives us peace of mind. 
With Brinks, you can conveniently manage your money online and with the mobile app. I get cash back on everyday purchases. Brinks knows what's valuable to me, saving money. Plus, you can load checks in minutes anywhere with mobile check load. Call now or go online to get your Brinks prepaid MasterCard. There's no credit check and no cost to order. And with a qualifying direct deposit, we'll upgrade you to Brinks Preferred with extra benefits. And in this TV-only offer, personalize your Brinks prepaid MasterCard with your photo for added security. Manage your money on the go, anywhere, and get the peace of mind you deserve. Brinks knows what's valuable to you. Call right now to order your Brinks prepaid MasterCard. Call 1-800-282-9643. There's no cost to order. Call now. You want a Maserati, but you need an SUV. Why not have both? Levante, the Maserati of SUVs. Experience it today at Sunset Maserati, Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Welcome back. Until now, even if police suspected you that you p opposed a risk to yourself or others, even though police were aware that you had guns in the house, there was little they could do. That changed after Parkland, after the new Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School Public Safety Act. Now police are allowed to seize guns and ammunition from those suspected of posing a threat to themselves or others. If you want them back, you have to go to court and convince a judge. Anything and everything that deals with guns and gun control is a polarizing uh, issue to the max, taking guns away from those with serious mental issues, not so much. Still, there are questions that remain. And joining us for more are Anthony Shrembry, who has too many titles, but remember the TV show, The Commission? He was the inspiration. Jeff Young, this one is a little bit easier. He is known in Sarasota as the gun lawyer. And Dr. Eddie Rene is one of Sarasota's best psychologists. Gentlemen, thank you all for uh, joining us tonight. As we speak, uh, police agencies around the Sun Coast, across Florida, are trying to come up with policies to uh, deal with the new state law. And I'm going to talk about Sarasota in a moment. But, uh, Jeff, you're the attorney here. What do police, the law is the law, but police departments have to come up with actually procedures, correct? Correct. Uh, the law lays out uh, the statute that says law enforcement now has this authority. And each department is going to have to come up with a way to set up procedures to enforce that authority. In other words, the easiest thing to point out is law enforcement are the ones who fill out this affidavit and send it to a judge asking for this temporary order. Is it just going to be the road deputy who fills it out? Is it going to have to go to a supervisor and get signed off on? Does it have to go up to a designated person who are going to review all these things before they submit them? These are the type of in-house things that the law enforcement so have to come up with. So the procedure in Sarasota could be different than the procedure in Manatee? Absolutely. Okay. Let me give you a, a statement and read part of it that we got from the Sarasota Sheriff's Department today. It says, in part, the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office has a current but somewhat temporary policy in place to handle the RPO as warranted. We are currently communicating with other agency as well as the court administration and the chief judge here locally to determine procedure and how best to implement the policy. Our office receives the daily legal updates regarding RPOs and issued throughout the state and input and feedback from the legal community to determine the order's effectiveness and possible limitations in other communities. And it goes on to say that the colonel in charge of this is actually having a meeting on this tomorrow. But Commissioner, um, from what you read there, do law enforcement agencies have discretion in terms of the implementation of this, this new law? Yes, and I think you'll see the civil rights people look for an abuse of discretion on the part of police officers who respond to these kinds of calls. Uh, under what conditions? Was it a domestic violence situation? W did the uh, wife or the husband have the indicia of injuries, things of that sort? that would make the officer say, okay, if there are any guns in the house, I'm going to seize them. Right, but I would imagine that they, they, if anybody takes issue of it, it would be after it really is implemented. Uh, doctor, um, is this law a long time in terms of, of coming? Well, you know, Alan, anytime we take weapons away from dangerous people, 
it's a good thing. My fear is that we're going to equate now violence with the mentally ill, when the mentally ill only constitutes a small percentage of the violence in our society. And that's my worry, that people will misunderstand this law to mean that if you have a mental illness, you are dangerous. But, but specifically, this law, correct me if I'm wrong, is, is designed to deal with those who are voicing or there's evidence of uh, being a threat to themselves or others like the Parkland shooter. Yes, as I said, anytime we take weapons away from, from dangerous people with mental illness, that's good. But a better solution would have been to create mental health treatment programs to fund hospitals and make access to mental health services more accessible rather than further stigmatizing the mentally ill. I, I would point out, as I often do, that Florida ranks dead last in the entire country in terms of the spending on mental health issues. Obviously, we are just getting warmed up, and we'll have much more on the re new red flag law right after we check first alert weather, so stay with us. When I was growing up, my mom told us, always treat others the way you want to be treated. She did business with companies that shared her values, like Mutual of Omaha. She had a guaranteed whole life insurance policy through United of Omaha Life Insurance Company, a Mutual of Omaha company. When my mother passed away, her United of Omaha policy helped cover her funeral expenses and bills, and they had money on its way to us within 24 hours. United of Omaha is here to take care of you. When you call the number on your screen, we'll help find the right policy for you. If you're between 45 and 85, you can get coverage up to $25,000 with no medical exam. Call us right now at the number on your screen. Now I know I'll be taking care of my family, even after I'm gone. United of Omaha Guaranteed Whole Life Insurance. Call or go online now. Be there for their future. Are you a food lover, restaurant goer, or home cook? Then check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, and helpful step-by-step -step videos. And you'll love the restaurant guide with direct links to your favorite Suncoast eateries. Whether you're cooking in or dining out, whet your appetite with tasty tips from Chef Judy at MySuncoast.com slash dining. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you. And for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! Our conversation uh, continues right after we get a check on the first alert weather with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Well, Alan, can I get a ruling on this one here? Uh, this is uh, sent in from John Scott from Pelican Point on the uh, golf course right there. A nice sized gator just kind of moseying along, moving on through. Uh, I guess uh, getting fined for slow play, you might say. Lakewood Ranch webcam showing some clouds around earlier today, a few showers too, and then notice the breaks in the clouds, lots of sunshine and a pretty nice afternoon, really, and looks as though we'll see decent weather tomorrow. There'll be uh, some clouds around, a chance for a few showers, an isolated thunderstorm, mainly inland late in the day. But uh, for the time being, uh, this is the forecast. We'll start off with some fog, a slight chance for a few morning showers that will linger through the noon hour as a weak frontal system moves in. Temperatures near the coast, mid to upper 70s, and we'll look for mostly fair skies tomorrow night. Uh, future cast indicating that the heavy rain along the east coast will continue to move off to the east, pinwheeling around this large area of low pressure now moving toward the northeast. This is at 4 a.m. on Tuesday. You can see that little activity, not much rain. And then again, this is at 9 a.m., most of it through us. But we'll see another little piece of energy possibly move through later on in the day, bringing with it a chance for showers. But uh, this particular model indicating nice weather, 3 o'clock. 
up to 8 o'clock looking pretty good. And then another possibility of a few showers come Wednesday morning. Not much, though. We're not anticipating a lot as some drier air slips in. The drier air will keep skies relatively quiet. Uh, for the remainder of the week after we get through Tuesday, I believe 78 degrees right now. Dew point is at 74. That's way up there. That makes the humidity feel at 87 percent. Uh, warm and muggy conditions expected for at least one more day. The high was 83 today, uh, one degree above average. Temperatures currently now near the coast, mid 70s from Holmes Beach down to Whitney Beach, 75 at Longbow Key, a few degrees warmer at Palm Air. And at uh, Meadows, 80 degrees. Northport at 81. Inglewood at 78. Plantation near at 81. Venice. Now it's 78 degrees. I mentioned that large area of low pressure. It's a upper level low that's really spinning very slowly and moving off to the northeast. This will continue to track in that direction over the next couple of days, really. By Wednesday, it'll be up off near Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire. But until then, uh, it's bringing rainfall from Georgia through the Carolinas all the way into Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois tonight. Behind it, you'll notice not many clouds here. That's that drier area I mentioned, which will slip in tomorrow. Once that weak frontal system, and you can see it right there, the beginning of that frontal system moves on through uh, tomorrow, late morning, early afternoon. Now, as far as this storm goes, this one's developing now over the northern and central Rockies. It will sweep yet another weak cold front our way as it dives to the south and uh, eventually uh, gains some strength over the southern Plains states. But it's not going to have much of a punch by the time it reaches us Friday. The rain chance fairly small at 30% at this time. So we'll keep a watch on the models as they progress through the work, work week. A few showers possible for boaters tomorrow. Winds will be fairly light northwest at 10 knots. A light chop out there in the bays and inland waters and uh, 79 for area beaches. The forecast looks like this. Temperature staying in the low 80s tomorrow. That slight chance for showers. Wednesday looks good. Less than a 20% chance for a few uh, sprinkles, if you will. There's that rain chance on Friday. Not all that high. At 30%, the weekend looks good, a little bit warmer, and yes, getting closer to that 90 degree temperature on Sunday and Monday. Al will be back with his guests right after this. Stick around. Set your course for a waterfront lifestyle on Florida's last private island. Discover one particular harbor by Margaritaville. Nearby sugar sand beaches are as easy to find as the warm Florida sunshine. Waterfront residences from the high 400s overlook beautiful Anna Maria Sound and a new marina with direct access to the Gulf of Mexico. Plus, incredible savings on move-in ready homes. Come tour designer models today. Visit ophmintousa.com now. Did you know you could get life insurance in just a few minutes? With guaranteed acceptance, whole life insurance through TrueStage, you can get up to $25,000 in protection with just a single phone call, and you cannot be turned down for any reason. Even if you have health problems or are living on a fixed income, True Stage Guaranteed Acceptance Whole Life Insurance Policies could work for you. True Stage cares for you the same way you care for your family. In fact, True Stage policies are already protecting over 18 million Americans. True Stage can help free your family from immediate financial stress when you're gone. Utility bills, mortgages, car payments, those are a lot of things that can add up pretty fast. My mom didn't have life insurance and the cost all fell on me. And that's expensive. Mm -hmm. we're, we're still paying for yeah, that. Yeah, we're still paying for that. Call 1-800-809-8372. Now, any amount of protection can help, and you are guaranteed to be accepted. In just a few minutes, you can help prepare your family with protection amounts up to $25,000. There are no medical tests or health questions. And remember, you cannot be turned down for any reason. Getting life insurance can be fast and easy, and it could cost less than you think. Plus, your price will never increase, and your benefit will never decrease. When I leave, everything will be taken care of for them. Call 1-800-809-8372 now for a free no-obligation quote. It's fast and easy. Plus, you get True Stage's 30-day satisfaction guarantee. Help protect your family from immediate financial burdens after you're gone with guaranteed acceptance whole life insurance through True Stage. Call 1-800-809-8372 today. Welcome back. We are talking about Florida's new red flag law. And joining us for more are Anthony Scremby, the former corrections commissioner of New York City, Jeff Young, known as the gun lawyer, and Dr. Eddie Regnier, a Sarasota psychologist. And 
As we mentioned, departments are, are right now talking about how to implement this new law. Um, there was one quote from a, uh, a, uh, a local police chief uh, who said that the problem right now is that the legislation was constitutionally vague and overly broad. It all comes down to what the legislature means by a threat. Jeff, I'm going to give that to you again in terms of a threat to a, yourself or to someone else. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's always the concern when you're dealing with new laws in, in general. Certainly as a Second Amendment advocate and a gun owner, we don't like those vague terms, as, as was pointed out by the commissioner, that there's too much officer discretion involved. So if they could all drive around with a licensed psychologist in their car and could do an evaluation on the guy right at the scene, that would be one thing. But when you're dealing with law enforcement officers who already are on heightened alert, who have their own stress, or may not have the great training or education, and all of a sudden they're confronted with this person, I'm just afraid it's going to be too easy for them to err on the side of caution and say, let's go ahead and try and take this guy's guns away. All right, Doctor, let me ask you this question, though. I'll put up, you know, kind of uh, an example of something. Let's say someone is, is indicating that they may be suicidal. Um, in, in terms of how far do you go back? Do you, does it have to be within the last 24 hours or a week or two weeks or a month? Where do you go back to say, okay, that person is an imminent risk and should not be in possession of a firearm? Well, the way we think about it, uh, a person who is dangerous at, at the moment, they're dangerous today. They may not be dangerous tomorrow, and they may not have been dangerous yesterday. So the, the issue is, what is their mental status at the time that a crime is committed or, at, or just before the crime? And that we really don't have a lot of good data on. We know there are dangerous people. There are people who suffer from serious mental disorders that make their mental disorder makes them dangerous. They are a minority, a very small minority in the, in the mental health community. But those people, it's hard to predict who's going to act. There's so many factors affect how a person acts. So couldn't somebody be making some kind of statement or putting something up on their Facebook page maybe a couple of days ago or last week indicating that you should be concerned about their predisposition here, but when police come to their front door, they may be acting perfectly rationally. That, that is absolutely true. We shouldn't take any threat not seriously. We should take every threat seriously. And we should check that person out. They should have a thorough psychological evaluation uh, in, in order to get a clearance of, but, that they're safe. But we're, As Jeff just said, police don't travel around with psychologists. That's the problem with the law, isn't it? That's the big problem. And in fact, many people who make threats never carry them out. In fact, the majority, overwhelming majority of people who make threats never carry them out. A very small minority do. So if we are going to look at the internet and find everybody who makes a threat and investigate them, we'll be bogged down with, with work. So Anthony, we keep on saying we want to keep guns away from people who pose a risk t to themselves and to others. Um, bef beforehand, police, in terms of, there was very little that they could do. Now they have discretion to do more, and the question is whether they should have that discretion at all. You know, if I were to put all of the theories of criminology together, it would boil down to this. The, um, the formula for crime is opportunity plus desire equals a crime. What we're trying to do here, and what the legislature is trying to do here, is to eliminate an opportunity. So, I don't like the abuse of discretion, but let it work out and see what it does. And of course, have research at the end so we could see and evaluate how this thing is working. You know, Jeff, you indicated that you're supportive of the goal here. Does what Anthony say sound reasonable, that we have to see how this is going Everything to be? Everything I say is reasonable. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, let me look at my notes here. <laughs> no, I mean, well, I, so. I would agree. <laughs> yes, uh, as I've said before when we, we've talked on this subject, the concept of the law doesn't bother me. I agree that, just like everybody else, we don't want firearms in the hands of mentally ill people who are current danger and that are going to cause problems, not just mentally ill people but dangerous people. So the concept of law is good. And when you have clear cut cases, nobody's going to complain. Somebody who's clearly a danger to themselves or others, they're the ones that make the newspaper, it's not a big deal. What I always concern myself is are the gray area cases where it's not so clear cut and I believe that law enforcement for, for liability reasons or whatever are always going to err on 
taking the firearms away because they don't want to be the one who doesn't, and then a shooting happens. Because those gray cases, those non-clear cut cases, are, are the cases that, that too often uh, turn out to be something significant. I, I don't want to change the subject completely here, but we're all aware of what happened uh, the, the last couple of days in the Memphis area the, at the Waffle House. Here is a young man who tried to jump the, the fence at the White House to talk to President Trump. The Secret Service and the FBI ordered, you know, took his guns away and gave them to his father, who gave them right back to him. We have a soundbite to play. The police department has received information that the guns were returned by Tazewell County authorities to Ryan King's father, who has now acknowledged giving them back to his son gave those guns back to a son who was, you know, absolutely doing things that one would, would question his mental capacity. Uh, you know, we don't know what was going on in the, that father's mind, but Jeff, uh, that would, I don't know if legally uh, he did something wrong there, or, or I, I can't imagine what he was thinking, but how does the, the law handle this? Sure, I don't, I don't know under that particular law what his legality is. I know under the new Florida law that you are permitted to turn your firearms to a third party person, a family member, et cetera. And if they then return those firearms to the person without court ordered permission, they themselves could be subject to criminal charges. But I think this just denotes what we as gun owners always say. You can pass as many laws as you want, but when there's a will, there's a way. If you have somebody that wants to do harm and wants to do violence, they'll either get a family member to give them the gun, or they'll steal the gun, or they'll use a truck like we saw today in Canada. I mean, you can pass all the laws that you want, and you may catch some of the people, but I don't believe that any law is ever going to stop these issues. And that uh, leads the trained psychologist to say what? Well, uh, again, we're stigmatizing the mentally ill. Uh, certainly in a law like this, we should uh, accompany it with also another law that says that if, you, if your guns are taken away because you have a mental disorder, that you must also receive treatment. And, and that treatment should address violence and dangerousness. And that's what's missing. But, but obviously, I, I mean, that, that goes to a civil rights issue. You cannot force somebody to, to get treatment for a medical condition. We do that all the time. Okay. We require people to have mental health services and family law. We require people to have mental health services and uh, criminal law. We require people to, have to see people uh, for substance abuse to enter treatment programs all the time. Anthony, it's actually true. Right? Even in domestic violence injunction cases, the court has the authority to order people to attend things such as anger management classes, get a mental health evaluation in order to have the injunction lifted from them. So that is something that you could explore in this new law as well. You know, Anthony, you have served in senior law enforcement capacities both here in the state of Florida and in the great state of, uh, of New York here. When new laws go into effect, like what we're talking about here, does it take some time to really kind of figure out how it works in any state and what needs to be then uh, redone or fixed in some sort of way? Well, th these go right to the police officer's locker room. This is where the, we see it work or it doesn't work. And what we're seeing in the 50 uh, major cities in the country is we're seeing the Ferguson effect, where officers are not performing some of the duties they're supposed to be doing for fear of lawsuits or getting in trouble, searching, uh, stop and frisk laws are not being used as they once did in New York too. So we're seeing that, that I, I think you're going to see some officers afraid to use their discretion in this law. On, on the other hand, do you think that this new law does give police officers discretion which they did not have before sometimes you do see a situation that you, you could see the danger coming but before the police officers were handcuffed from really doing anything about it at all well I've in my career I've seen the abuse of discretion I'm always without policies and procedures I have to see and see how they're going to use their discretion in enforcing something like this uh, Doctor, uh, correct me uh, if I'm wrong, and we're running out of time here, but do you see any merit to this new law here in, in terms of, of, of the mental health oh, capacity? Absolutely. We needed to, we needed to move towards a, a society that at least offered some control over some people, who particularly dangerous people, 
their, their access to guns. And this gives us at least the beginning first step. It's not the end. It's the beginning first step. Okay, we have to take a quick break, and we'll be back for final thoughts in a moment, so stay with us. I work hard all day, and this is why. But taking care of my money has never been easy. Brinks knows what's valuable to me. I'm making it easy to keep track of my money and pay my bills on time. Here's to the strong, to the dependable, to the trusted. Your family counts on you. Who can you count on? The Brinks prepaid MasterCard. With direct deposit, you can get your paycheck or government payments up to two days faster. I don't have time to wait for a paycheck, cash it, and then run around and pay bills. Brinks knows what's valuable to me, time. Call now or go online to get your Brinks prepaid MasterCard. There's no cost to order and no credit check. Load money onto your card and then shop online, pay bills, buy groceries. I get a text alert every time our card is used, so we always know our balance. And we're protected from unauthorized transactions. Brinks gives us peace of mind. With Brinks, you can conveniently manage your money online and with the mobile app. I get cash back on everyday purchases. Brinks knows what's valuable to me, saving money. Plus, you can load checks in minutes, anywhere with mobile check load. Call now or go online to get your Brinks prepaid MasterCard. There's no credit check and no cost to order. And with a qualifying direct deposit, we'll upgrade you to Brinks Preferred with extra benefits. And in this TV-only offer, personalize your Brinks prepaid MasterCard with your photo for added security. Manage your money on the go, anywhere, and get the peace of mind you deserve. Brinks knows what's valuable to you. Call right now to order your Brinks prepaid MasterCard. Call 1-800-282-9643. There's no cost to order. Call now. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. And our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And Jeff, I'm going to start with you. So how is this going to work out? Police departments, law enforcement agencies are doing what they're doing. They're going to start implementing it, and then is it really up to attorneys like you if you believe that there is an abuse to somehow challenge it in court? Yeah, I mean, the good thing in this particular case, and uh, we're all not trying to beat up on law enforcement officers, but they're supposed to submit the paperwork to a judge. So the judge is the one who's making the ultimate decision of whether to give the temporary injunction and make it permanent or not. It's not just the discretion of law enforcement. So the hope would be that the judicial branch would be the ones who would be the, the check on any, any abuse of discretion that we have. But I would agree that this is a brand new law. When you have the clear-cut areas, it's fine, but when you get into those gray areas, we're going to have to see how it shakes out. We're going to have to see how many of these are granted, what they're based them on, if law enforcement is being truthful in their affidavits, are we coming up with any abuses, and we are going to have to kind of wait and see how it shakes out. How, Anthony, how long does it usually take for police departments to train officers about a, 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 a new state law that basically changes procedures significantly? Well, it's usually done in lineup uh, procedures when they, officers turn out. They might give them a lecture. They might send them some material that they have to uh, that they have to read. Some even give a test so they fully understand it, or bring in a department attorney and go over it. Uh, we need to have a wait and see attitude about this. The part that I don't see that concerns me is the research aspect. A year from now. Are we doing it more to black defendants than we're doing it to white defendants? Are we doing it more to women and not to men? We need to have a research aspect to see where we're at. That's the part that's missing here. And, and Doctor, you, you said that another major problem is someone could be a threat today and not tomorrow. So how does a law handle something like that? Well, this law doesn't. So if you say something that makes you sound dangerous, your, your guns are removed. But someone with a mental disorder uh, may fluctuate. That is, they may be dangerous today, not dangerous tomorrow, and dangerous again some, in some future date. So no law is going to handle that. 
Therefore, the way to do it, really, the best way to reduce the, a threat of violence from a mentally ill is to provide them with treatment. That means funding mental health services, training people how to evaluate and, and treat the dangerously ill, uh, those kinds of things that we don't seem to be interested in. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there for now. <laughs> FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. We want to thank our guests for being here tonight. Anthony Shrembry, the former Corrections Commissioner of New York. Jeff Young, known as the gun lawyer, and Dr. Eddie Renier, a Sarasota psychologist. When we return, we'll have a final look at your first alert. Weather Plus, in Toronto, a van plows into pedestrians that leads to deaths and injuries. Stay with us. You want a Maserati, but you need an SUV. Why not have both? Levante, the Maserati of SUVs. Experience it today at Sunset Maserati, Alfa Romeo of Sarasota. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat, and I'm doing a downward dog, and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How did you not love him? I kind of grew up all across the country. I come from five generations of military men. My dad is still active duty. My grandpa is retired Marines. I like going for runs with my dog. I love, you know, taking her out to the dog beach over in Venice. There are so many things here to do on the Sun Coast. My goal every day when I come into work at ABC7 is to tell your stories, give you that major local news and those details that you really care about. I'm Jacqueline Matter and I'm here for you. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity and the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That I think is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. Your primetime headlines are coming up in a moment, but right now let's get a final check on our first alert forecast. Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Thanks, Alan. We are looking at a nice day today, at least the afternoon. We had some clouds around and then the sunshine popped out there and warmed things up and the beaches saw highs into the mid to upper 70s there due to the water temperature being right around 75, 76. That the breeze coming in kept things just a little bit milder there near the beach. It was humid though, and the humidity really kicked off and kicked off these storms that we saw and then uh, they blew up into central Florida, moved along to the east coast and out into the Atlantic. That's what they'll continue to do. Now, you'll notice some showers here. It's at 430 in the morning on Tuesday. This model depicting a weak frontal system kind of slipping on by. This front will, again, uh, not do a whole lot in terms of change our changing our temperatures. We will see that move through and dry us out slightly. Now, this is at 930, again, depicting the rain well to the south and east of us. Not much at all. The rain chances are fairly small at 30 percent for a few brief showers tomorrow. Looking good tomorrow night, and then again, uh, a little bit of residual moisture may be left over on Wednesday morning, but uh, should not be a big factor. We're going to see these little pieces of energy still pinwheeling around this huge area of low pressure that's moving through uh, the Ohio Valley now. 78 degrees, we have some clouds still around, and the dew point way up there. The humidity 87%, the barometer 2997 rising ever so slightly. And the forecast model is depicting some showers here. Again, just slight chance or maybe an isolated thunderstorm. If we do see that, I think it'll be inland by pushing off toward the east coast. There's that area of low pressure. Look how big it is. Stretching from the Carolinas all the way over through Tennessee uh, into Arkansas and Missouri tonight. This area of low pressure is an upper level low with a surface reflection, but uh, it's moving off basically to the east northeast and will be parking itself uh, just up there over the northeast United States in the next uh, 48 hours, really. But the rain isn't all that intense. It is now in the uh, Carolinas into North Carolina and South Carolina, stretching up to West Virginia. But uh, to the west, it's not really drawing any moisture there. This is drawing that moisture in from the Atlantic, uh, bringing a little bit more so into the mid-Atlantic coast states. There is a weak frontal system. You can just barely see the clouds hanging out with it. 
and that will give us that slight chance for a few showers tomorrow. You'll see that depicted with this model too. As we see as we work through time, uh, this is at 530 in the morning. A few brief showers are possible uh, as we take it to the four o'clock hour. It's still this uh, different model showing some light rain still lingering from Sarasota County southward. And then by again, six, seven o'clock, all of it should be gone. Here's our next weather maker and there's not much to it. It'll move through the southern Plains states at four o'clock on Wednesday and then uh, drop down into the lower Mississippi Valley on Thursday. Approaching the panhandle, this uh, weak area of low pressure will have another weak cold front with it, which will move through our area on Friday. So we expect an increase in clouds, as you see depicted here Thursday night and throughout the day on Friday with a slight chance for showers. Temperatures right now. Look at this. Buffalo, nice thawing out. 73 degrees. Uh, they thought it'd never get there spring and 75 now in Omaha. Denver at 71, a bit colder in Billings and 75 now in Dallas, 79 in Houston and 72 in Oklahoma City. Well, we'll get to the forecast now and show you what's happening for boaters tomorrow. Looks good out there. A light chop on the bays and inland waters. That light chop should stick around too. It looks like through the rest of this uh, work week. The extended forecast is calling for some sunshine on Wednesday and a lot of it. 80 degrees on Thursday. So those are typical for this time of year in the low 80s. A little bit warmer as we get into Sunday and Monday. Back into the mid 80s we go with low temperatures staying in the 60s right on in through the next seven days. Prime time headlines is next with Alan. Stick around. When you are home alone, an emergency can become a tragedy. However, with any of Life Alert's three emergency systems, help can be summoned immediately, whether in the bathroom. I've fallen in the shower. At home. Help, I've fallen and I can't get up. And on the go. Help, I've fallen in the park and I can't get up. Don't worry, help is on the way. Life Alert saves a life every 11 minutes. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-518-0221. That's 1-800-518-0221. Call now, 1-800-518-0221. For a free brochure, call 1-800-518-0221. I'm calling in regards about my mother, and I'm here, and I just want to thank you because it saved my mother's life yesterday. Um, and I'd like to know the names of the people that came in and saved her so I could call and thank them. And she's doing fine. It's a wonderful thing. Thank you. When you fall and cannot get up, an accident can turn into a tragedy. But with Life Alert, one touch of a button can get you help fast. Life Alert saves a person from a catastrophe every 10 minutes. Life Alert is a lifesaver. If it weren't for Life Alert, I wouldn't be sitting here today. For a free Life Alert brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. That's 1-800-652-3012. Call now, 1-800-652-3012. For a free brochure, call 1-800-652-3012. Mark Zupan, part of the U.S. Paralympic rugby team. In my game, movement is everything. I get frustrated when my move is blocked. Especially when that guy has no right to be there, even just for a minute. I love a challenge, but I don't like to play this game every day. A message from the United Spinal Association. Checking primetime headlines on Saturday, former President H. George H.W. Bush buried his wife Barbara of 73 years. Tonight, the 41st president is in intensive care at a Houston hospital. Bush is reportedly suffering from a severe infection that led to sepsis. We wish the former president the best and we'll have more coming up tonight at 11. Chaos in Canada's largest city. A white van plowed through a busy Toronto street. The driver is now in custody, but at least nine people are dead and another 16 are injured. Steve Naines has more on the investigation. A terrifying afternoon in downtown Toronto. I asked the city of Toronto 
pray for all victims. As a van crashed into people walking along the street. He just went on the sidewalk. He just started hitting everybody, man. He hit every single person on the sidewalk. Anybody in his way, he would hit. The bus stop, everything got shattered. There was a lady in there that I saw. One man says he followed the vehicle to check on the driver. I thought he had a heart attack or something, so I was trying to chase it down in a way almost, try to catch up, see what happened. All I've seen is this guy is just crumbling. I mean, he's going 70, 80 clicks. He's just hitting people one by one, going down. Oh, man, it was like... It's a nightmare, man. Officials say it will be a long investigation. Driver's in custody right now, and he's been investigated to the events of that took place this afternoon. Witnesses say the van traveled up to a mile, hitting anything and anyone in its way. Oh, man, it's a gruesome scene. It's really bad out there. I couldn't believe what I seen, man. It was like, oh, man, everybody, all these people on the streets getting hit one by one, post office box getting crumbled up on people. Police arrested the driver as crews continued to investigate the collision. It is a time uh, to be as calm as we can be in the city, to understand that our first responders are doing their job, especially our police. Our hearts go out to anyone affected. We're going to uh, uh, obviously have uh, more to learn and more to say in the coming, uh, coming hours. I'm Steve Nannis reporting. The man accused of killing four people at a Nashville area Waffle House is now in custody. Travis Rankskings arrest capped a day long manhunt. Police say he opened fire with an assault style rifle at the restaurant in Anticock. Early yesterday morning, the 29 year old sat in his pickup truck for a few minutes, then got out wearing only a green jacket and shot two people outside the restaurant. They say he continued the rampage inside the restaurant, killing another two people. He ran off after a customer wrestled, wrestled his gun away. Another company is reportedly cutting ties with the NRA. USA Today reports cooler maker Yeti is no longer doing business with the National Rifle Association's charitable arm, the NRA Foundation, after a letter from an NRA lobbyist who said Yeti is no longer selling products to the foundation. The lobbyist called the move unsportsmanlike, saying it was made with no prior notice. The NRA Foundation donates to competitive youth shooting teams like one Florida school shooter Nicholas Cruz belonged to. And there is a new royal. The Duchess of Cambridge gave birth at 11.01 London time to a boy. The baby weighed in at 8 pounds, 7 ounces. No word yet on the name. Kate and her son are both said to be doing well. This is the third child for Kate and Prince William. The baby is fifth in line to the British throne. And that's all the time we have for this evening. I'm Alan Cohn. Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.